So we are going to look at, I have this um, code up on my personal GitHub now because I've been working on this with Steve Serwin, WA5FRF, and um, it's just been kind of in development, so I haven't pushed it to the Hamsi GitHub just yet. Make one more adjustment here. And if you go ahead to the ionosance plotter to ipi and b, you can download the raw file here. And if you have Jupyter Lab, do I even have it running? I don't have it running. So if you don't have Jupyter Lab, you can go to anaconda.com slash download and you can download and install Anaconda. They have it available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you can pick. You just install the full package and it will give you um, access to the analysis environment that you need. So once you have that downloaded, you can run something called Anaconda Navigator which I'm starting, it's a little slow, a little clunky, but it's nice because it's free and open source and it's very powerful. So I'm just waiting for my Anaconda Navigator to start here. There's the Anaconda Navigator logo. And that goes away, I think. Usually I just keep this running all the time in the background of my computer. So I don't have to go through this whole process, but I restarted my computer the other day. So. All right, so then this Anaconda Navigator window comes up. You can close out the advertisements. And the thing I usually like to run is Jupyter Lab, which is over here. I hit launch, and it's going to launch a web server on your computer that's set up to access locally. So once you hit launch, you, you wait a minute or so. And it should automatically bring up a web browser that looks like this. And it's running, the web server is running on port 8888 of your local host. So it looks like this. In the left-hand side, you have this little folder icon. So you can use that to access your files. So I downloaded my Ionisand plotter notebook into my downloads folder. I can double click on that. And there it is. So this is a plotting script that I I wrote in conjunction with Steve Serwin for his Hamsi project. And what it does is it automatically pulls Ionisand data from the Digisand fast car API and it plots it. So this fast car API is all, basically all it does is you build up the correct URL it, and it you go to that and it generates a, a CSV type file that you can download and then process. Um, I would like to point out that there are uh, these websites. Um, there's a Digisand manual 
So if you want to know how an ionosonde actually works, one of these ionosondes actually work and what type of data it provides, you can click that web that link and it bring up it brings up a PDF. I'm not speaking correctly. That gives you all sorts of useful information that you want to know about the ionosondes. That's one thing that's there. IANA web portal. If you click that, I guess that gives you another. Maybe it's the same. Um, I must have the same link in there. Oh yeah, I don't know why I did that. That should be the gyro website. So I, that's that link is wrong. And here's the here's the fast care. So actually, this is this is useful too. So that link right there, fast care. You can just put in the dates and times, and it will do the plots here for you. It tells you what data you can possibly download. Um, so the one we probably want today is MUFD maximum usable frequency three thousand kilometers. But you can see all these different parameters you can get, and you can look at. And you can read about what these different things are. This is probably useful right here, this Digison station map. So you can see that there's an Ionosan in Boulder, one in Millstone Hill, one at Wallops Island, one at Eglin Air Force Base. What this does not tell you is the abbreviations, the three abbrevi the three letter abbreviations that you need in order to access that data. We'll try to find that in a minute. Let's go back over here. So here, I'm going to restart the kernel and clear all outputs of the cell. I'll just note, Nathaniel, there's no Digisond uh, in the middle of the country. We really need one like in Iowa or Missouri. Yeah. I, I, I was trying to talk uh, a professor at my local college uh, at Axham and and a good friend from childhood who's a retired dean at Valparaiso University into putting one in, but <laughs> he's not enthusiastic about it for some reason. We've got a grape in Indiana, though. We do? Yeah, well, I know. That's Melt, K9ATR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've known him since before school. Well, we've got a quite a base of um, interested parties in Missouri, but I'm also thinking, I wonder if Iowa, University of Iowa, would be interested in hosting something like a Digison. Maybe. Well, we should talk about this more in a little bit. Let's go through yeah. the data analysis for now. All right, so here... No so. Here I'm loading in the um, libraries that we're using. If I hold down shift hit enter, it will load those libraries in. I These mpl.rc params set some default parameters for plotting. And then here um, you can enter, This is these are the things you actually want to change. So like uh, rc code, this is the ionosan that you want to use. So like, let's say we want Boulder. That's BC 840. We'll go figure out how to find those RC codes in a minute. Uh, start date, start time and end time. It's year, month, day, and then hour. And then it would be minute and second. Um, what day do you want me to look at? Do you want to um, pick one? Yes. We have dropout yesterday. Okay. So well, we had, the, we had the big one in um, British Columbia and um, Texas and someplace else. So that's for yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Or the day before had certainly had a big one in New England. Um okay, great. So yesterday was the 13th. As I figure it, yes. Okay. And then we'll try just going to the 14th and see what happens. 
And for parameters, um, FOF2, you can, it'll create a stack plot of different parameters. Yeah. So MUFD, hey. we saw from here, is that. Where are you? <laughs> what do you mean, where am I? I mean, what is this, that, this um, web page in which you are entering stuff? This is the Jupyter Lab web page. Thank you. You know what? You you don't have any experience with Jupyter Lab, right? No, I don't. Maybe for what we need to do right now, maybe just using this website, which I forgot existed until like two minutes ago, is the way to go. Gyro.unmesslowell.edu.dibase. Yes, did base. So let me, I can put that in the chat. Please. Okay. Because, yeah, if you use this, then you don't have to worry about running any special software on your computer. You just have a website you can go to. Yay. All right. And, oh, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be much better for you, I think. Way better. Okay. So we can do 12, 13, And then this will, I'm sorry, this will be 2023. 2023, 12, 14. All right, and we want, and they have a drop down list. The date's wrong. I think your date's wrong, Nathaniel. Is that better? That looks better to me. But... Thank you. Okay, so then you can pick out a station so we can try Boulder. And then we can pick maximum usable frequency. Hit search. Okay. All right. So then it gives it to you here. So you could you could just put this into Excel and you could plot it that way. Yep. Or uh, you could well, use my code, What's that? No, you could use multiplot. Or you can use multiplot. You can plot it however you like. So the way I like doing it is I like going back to this where I'm putting in the same information here and it downloads it locally on the computer. Whoops. And it looks like there's no data available for that day. Okay. They're all no, NAND. No, Why is that? Pick uh, Millstone. We had we had data. We have data available here. Let me try, let me try these other parameters. I may have the parameter in wrong. That always happens. Yeah. Okay, but I don't have the MUF. But I do have FOF2. Doesn't that look familiar? The shape Just of that up. curve? <laughs> it does look kind of similar. What is FOF2 briefly? FOF2 is the peak frequency of the uh, plasma frequency of the F2 region. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. That's F0, F2. Got it. I think it's actually F O F two. F sub zero. I think, I think it's actually it might. I think it's F O meaning ordinary as opposed to extraordinary because I think there's also an F X F two. Oh. See, I think it might be like F sub O. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 But there's an F O F two and there's an F X F two. 
Do they look the same? Can we plot them both? I think so. Hold on. Uh, Rachel just landed. She she flew back from here, so she's just messaging me that she um got back to Scranton. Uh, welcome. Did you all lose uh, the Zoom session a while ago? Anybody? I didn't. Okay, I did. It was very strange. I wouldn't. I could not connect to Zoom anywhere. You were talking and had a video live the whole time you were saying that, so I'm not sure what was going on. Hmm. But you were still connected. Interesting. Did you get my email? I looked. Let me look. Da, 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 da. What? Yeah. What? Join? Yes, I have it. Good. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. I'll put it over here and see what it is. If you I want latitude, it. longitude, and elevation, I could send you that as well if you want. Oh, nope. nope. I can dig that out. Thank you. Okay. I don't think. Now I'm trying to plot at FXF2. I don't think what we're doing right now, it really <clears throat> not showing up. Oh, John, that's just what I needed. Thank you. Good. It's even correct for me. <laughs> All right. Validation completed. I want to Nathaniel, where's a good place for me to get started with Jupyter notebooks? Um, in terms of how to use them. Yeah. Is there a tutorial? I'll yeah, I'll, I'll, look I'll look it up. Yeah, if if you look up, there should be yep. all sorts of documentation. Okay, I can do that. And I also do recommend um reading through this Digisand manual. Yeah. And where is that located? In, uh, page 148 or something. <laughs> uh, so. so the link the link to the Digisand manual, I'll put that in the chat too. All right. There's the link to the Digisan manual. Thank you. And Chrome then... extension. Who? What's that mean? I on it. Let's see. Uh... Nope, uh, images.google.com. This is a good um, image right here. Hold on a moment. Save, pop, pop. Yes, the classic image. Yeah, classic image. See, yeah, you got to turn your head just to read it. <laughs> See if I can make it bigger. And the axes are labeled inside instead of outside, which is strange. They're labeled outside. No, no, no. Trans it says tra tra transmitter frequency inside. That that's normally would be outside, but they're saving space. Sure, oh. why not? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, these these blue lines, these are annotations. I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the legend. That's the the range that right. they're showing. Frequency and horizontal and range vertical. So the, the time the of flight. Color, I mean, the the transmitted frequencies is one to ten megahertz. 
they're saying. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, Alaska. So this. See these numbers on the left hand side there? Yeah. Those are the numbers that the system automatically picks off of this graph and will put into um and will give you through this interface. Uh-huh. Try to so this is all you UMass Lowell? Yeah, this is all UMass Lowell. So yeah, the numbers good. here are the numbers that it automatically picks off of here. So the colored values are the actual like raw ionosand data. And the, notice how dramatically different the ordinary and extraordinary reflections are. Green is extraordinary, red is ordinary. Yeah. Can you hold on for one second? You can keep chatting. And made. Hello? Hello. I'm back. Okay. So, yeah, the colored values are the raw data. And like um, David McGaw pointed out, the red ones, the pinkish ones, those are the ordinary mode. And the green ones are the extraordinary mode. Yeah. The ordinary mode is the values that you get when you don't, without any magnetic magnetosphere. I'm sorry, not magnetosphere. They're the values that you get without any magnetic field effects. The green ones are the, the x-ray has the magnetic field effects in there as well. Both types of waves, both uh, modes are present in the ionosphere at the same time. I would say for for starting out for what you're doing right now, just pay attention to the ordinary ones. If you can explain what you're doing with just the ordinary ones, don't worry about the extraordinary ones. The these this curve right here, this black curve, this is an automatically fit electron density profile that their algorithm calculates uh, based on the raw data. So there, yeah. when you look at like FOF2, FOF1, all these parameters, that's the, their algorithm looks at the raw data, generates this black curve, and then they use that black curve to generate these numbers that you see over here. Got it. Okay. And those the, numbers are in units of? Uh, they are in units of either megahertz or kilometers. Okay. Okay. So though, okay. if... If it's a frequency for units of megahertz, if it's is a this, is this scale from one to ten megahertz? That's right. correct. Okay. Okay. So the x axis is one to ten megahertz, and the y axis is ninety to six hundred and fifty kilometers. Uh Now remember, this is pointing straight this, up. This is altitude, not horizontal. That's right. But so the, it, if you're puzzled why the it cuts off at five and a half megahertz, but we're still hearing ten, this is going straight up. This is not a bleak. Yeah. Well, this is testing the uh, ionosphere right above me. Looking straight up. Yeah. Yeah, and interesting, you picked the Kona, which is a harp in Alaska. Yeah. I, I, thanks to Nathaniel, I've been there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my time is running short, so I have to go very soon because there's like 3 million things happening at the same time. Uh, but this is an auto fit curve. Units of frequency here, so it's pointing straight up. Um, what this is saying is that when it gets to two megahertz, um, 
this is the Mac. This is the height at which two megahertz is being reflected back down. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a simplified way of viewing it. This, do you see how there's this inflection point here? How there's this local peak? Yep. That is the peak frequency, the peak plasma frequency of the E region ionosphere. So this is FOE, which is like 1.88. If you look over here on the left, FOE is 1.88 megahertz. Yeah. Yep. You see that the height, it's about 100 kilometers, maybe a little more than 100 kilometers. That's HME, which is, um, or H, H prime, HME right here. HME is 104.7 kilometers. So that's the height of that. If we keep going up, there's like a little, um, bump. So somewhere here, there's an F region, an F1 region. I don't really see it, okay? But if there were an F region, you should see some sort of a bump here. I see an inflection up. Okay, and then like maybe right about here? Yeah. So wherever the algorithm yes. thinks that inflection point is or that little, that peak, that's going to correspond with the um, FO1, yeah. FOF1. They're, they're calling is, it out at 2.78. Yeah, they're saying it's at 2.78. So they're claiming the F1 region is here and the um altitude is hmf1 is 167 kilometers okay so mm. i don't know as you can see I, I feel like the profile they computed here well they're probably taking a number of things into account there but it's a little harder to justify the fo the F1 region, then say like the F2 region is here. See, there's a big, really big hump over here. This is the F2 region peak. So that the FO F2 is going to be like 4.7 megahertz. Um, so that is it's they have 4.8 megahertz here, and the height is uh about 225 kilometers. So that's HMF2. They actually have at 214. Point nine kilometers. So that's right there. Hmm. That's nighttime, isn't it? Uh, twenty two thirty. Is that the time? Uh, nighttime at that... where? Okama. Okay. Well, time is nine hours behind um, UT. I need. I need to go. Um, is this enough to kind of give you some things to think about? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. because Thank I, you, Nathaniel. No, yes. thank you. I, I think with this, with these resources, it should be able to help you have some, some things to, you know, help, help you track down what that, what might be corresponding with that drop off. Got it. We're and looking for correlation here. I'll do one other advertisement. Um, there's a really good book, Davies. There's a free version and a more expensive version. And it's called? Ken Davies, Ionospheric Radio. So this is a book. This explains all sorts of things about ionospheric measurement. It'll explain FOF2 and FOF1 and what the differences are. Um, so you can buy it off of Amazon for $123. I can I can loan you a copy, George. Yeah. Okay, do that bit, please. There you can they do have a um you can buy an electronic copy for $175 in PDF. Hmm. There is, and that's the version that's up to date as of 1990. So this is still a very usable reference, but 1990. He has another version that he wrote that's back in um, the 1960s, like 1969. That's, that's the one I have. <laughs> and, and that one's available for free, legally. Um. 
Yes. So here's the the free one from 1965, but you know it's definitely a good starting point. All right. And you Thank can you. also also you can um check with your you can check your local library or even your local university library see if you can um get well, a hold of you know University of Lowell probably has it and oh. and uh, and it's right up the road perfect so and and actually if University of Lowell is um there you they may be able to help you with uh, some of the Ion Assand interpretation sure. as well I may just stick my nose in it and see what happens. They Thank built you. it. All right. I'm going to go. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank Nathan. you, Nathaniel. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. You too. Happy Hanukkah and what every other holiday that people every <laughs> other holiday. It's, uh, it's, so it's the solstice, you. you know. So we'll just celebrate. Yep. Happy solstice. See ya. Bye, everybody.